so in case you didn't know, uh, we are a couple. Take the proof. <laughs> September 2015, using a point-and-shoot camera and our binoculars. We used this method for a while and got our first shots this way. We began to get the habit of going out of town to get the better skies. We enjoyed it, but expectations began to grow which made us decide to get a newer and better camera. You know what they say, you gotta start somewhere. October 2015. Getting our DSLR camera basically changed the game for us. We were able to get better images and invested in some lenses as well. We really got into the swing of things and began to do more with it, like taking time lapses. With practice, we were able to familiarize ourselves with settings and whatnot. So, question from Amini82 asking which one of you started the idea? Hmm. Well, that would go over to Antoine, actually. This is his passion, this is his hobby. Like, it really didn't start with astrophotography, it really just started with a love of astronomy. And um, so, I guess the basic answer to that question is Antoine. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, at first, she didn't really care, but once she tried going outside with me uh, in the dark, going with a telescope and stuff. She really wanted to to come more often and that's how it started. December 2015. Getting a tracker was incredible because we were now able to take long exposure images of deep space with just our camera and a tracking system. Getting images like these were mind-blowing for us, and we were abuzz with what targets to try next. Which leads us to another fan question. And then we have a question from Santi22R asking, who chooses the target? I don't, I don't think I've really ever chosen a target. I always said that I wanted to do the moon, so I was really excited to do the moon episode when we finally did it. And I think during that episode a lot, you found me talking the most. Uh, and I was, I don't know, I was really excited to do that, but any other times mostly, like the ones that we would discuss, mostly were chosen by Antoine. Because most of the time, because uh, she used to go to college, so depending on the season and stuff, uh, I would go online and pick something and she would come home and we packed up and go image. January 2016. Little disclaimer, I was not jazzed about the telescope because it was a large purchase that required a lot of commitment. I was confident in Antoine, but it still made me nervous. If you watched our unboxing videos, I was not that enthused, but eventually I decided to join Antoine and I got more comfortable with it. Now we get to be together and work together as a team with a hobby that we can both share. So this is from, is it Bed Bedouin Empire? I guess so. Sorry if I butchered your name. Um, Who's the fastest at polar alignment? That's an easy one. It's not me. <laughs> I don't even know she. Do you even know how to do polar alignment? I know how to polar align. He just won't let me touch the mount. No, I will. Because I can't I will... lift it. So like, you don't I, have to I lift mean, the mount to polar align. Well, in terms of setting up, if I were to set up the whole equipment setup myself, I would not be allowed to because I'm not strong enough to lift the mount. I could. It's just probably better if I don't. Well, the motorized mount, yeah, it's too heavy, but... But for polar alignment? The thing is, I think she knows how to do it, but she, I just won't uh, trust her fully before, you know, like once you do the, the polar alignment, then you have to do the star alignment. And once I do the polar alignment, um, if she did it first, I have to double check, because I, I don't want to go back. He needs um, to have control over that. Yeah, if he doesn't, I don't think that he's gonna 
want to function the whole night through. So yeah, it's it's Antoine for sure. May 2016. This is when we started Galactic Hunter. Hello, not much to say about that except that we love helping beginners and that we are happy that you guys are here with us. We also made all of our videos in French on a different channel, which, to be honest, is very, very difficult for us, and we're not really sure about the future of the French channel. This one is from Mallory McNeil, who got each other into the topic, or was it a mutual thing? So we kind of talked about that before, and I wanted to kind of discuss it further. Uh, this is Antoine's, like, this was Antoine's hobby. He began it, and I, I'm, I want to be a supportive wife, so I'm just like, yeah, you know, I like astronomy. Mm -hmm. And so, when, when we went out the first couple times, I didn't really know what I was looking at, you know? So, it took, a, it took a while for me to start enjoying it myself. It's not my 100% passion project. However, I do enjoy doing it, and I enjoy doing it with Antoine, so... Uh, after a while, it became a mutual thing. November 2016 Orion Telescopes and Binoculars reached out to us with a questionnaire interview after seeing that we were customers and used equipment that we purchased for astrophotography. We were so proud that we framed the letter and the interview. To this day, this is still our proudest feature. Mostly because it was our first one and we really didn't expect it so fast. And uh, lastly, I want to introduce to you guys the Astrophotographer's Guidebook. December 2017. With a passionate mind, I got busy with more work for Galactic Hunter and thought that I would create a guidebook showcasing potential targets for each season. Dahlia helped me out on this with the editing of the book, and it was quite the adventure. We were really proud to have a book of our own to help other amateur astrophotographers on their journey to imaging the night sky. December 2018 I could not believe it, but I was chosen by NASA to attend the next rocket launch of SpaceX from the Kennedy Space Center. It was a fantastic experience, although stressful as I had to rent a car, an Airbnb and the launch got delayed, but I recorded the whole process in a video that we uploaded back then if you're interested. January 2019, it did not happen quickly, but eventually we were able to upgrade our equipment. And we made a friend in the process who helped us out with the camera. We kind of still can't believe this happened, but talking about gear, here is another question. Then we have Josh Van, how did discussions on buying new gear go? Do you ever disagree on what gear is best? Well, the thing is we never, never, never buy new gear. <laughs> we just we bought New Year once, that's it. That was a difficult conversation though. I would yeah, say the very first time, yeah. I would say because I wasn't I wasn't sure like how how beneficial it would be for Antoine, like sure, like this is his hobby, it's a long term thing. And and he would probably use it all the time when possible. But I'm like, you know, sinking like, you know, two thousand kind two thousand dollars into this kind of thing, I'm like, that's a little steep, you know, given we only had like uh, I think a digital camera and uh, and some really yeah. good binoculars. That's it. I'm like I don't know, man. Like it's it's really tough, but I think the best thing in that case, like you know, I don't want. <laughs> it's always scary investing in new gear because you never know what's yeah, gonna the happen. The first time we had a long talk. Like she wasn't really into it. I was too into it. <laughs> I wanted to buy everything at once uh, in one day. Yeah, but, and I've, um, but I was communication a, definitely. Yeah. Communication is what worked out for us. And we, I was like, you know what? You don't have a lot of other things that you want to do. So if this is what you want to dive into, like you go ahead and do it. And then I ended up, you know, coming into it myself. March, 2019. Earlier this year, we were approached by OPT to consider a partnership that would benefit both of us. 
Now we have the chance to try new equipment out and take images that will be better or different than our own setup. We are super grateful for the opportunity and hope to be able to try more new things over time. And then we have an interesting question from Taylor Weber asking How can I get my girlfriend more interested in astrophotography when most of the time is waiting? And that's kind of a tricky question. <laughs> I mean, it depends, you know, for some people, but you know, in our case, it kind of went like this. I wish I had someone to start this hobby with Starting this with my loved one Could this be more than just a myth? I'm not sure I want to Most of the time is waiting I never signed up for this too When we were dating Oh, trust me, baby, trust me, love You'll never get bored with me You will fit just like a glove And in a couple months, you will thank me Okay, fine, I believe you Let's go ahead and buy some gear This just felt so out of the blue Let's hope the next few nights are clear so Dahlia, what do you think? Isn't this just fantastic? Oh my god, Antoine, you're right I've never felt so ecstatic Guys, you can have the same Just keep the hope Girls, trust me There's nothing more intense than a telescope this video is getting a bit long, so we have just three less questions. Question from Cat 19 asking why this is a good activity to start. I mean, for us it really is just like building memories. And I mean, we've got a lot in this book and it's so much that it's falling apart. But like here we have, um, when we went to Tonopah, when we stayed at a, um, a hotel, and we also kept if you guys recall, like our solar eclipse sunglasses from when we had that great American solar eclipse. But you know, it's it's just really good to make memories. There's a lot of keepsakes that you can have and that way you can recall these moments that we've had together. <laughs> and then we have a question from Special Mulber asking Pas trop de prise de tête? Which means don't you often argue? Well we almost divorced like three times because of this. Okay. It's not true. <laughs> no, we argue sometimes because we don't agree with like how we film and stuff, but it's rare. Like for example, in the, the upcoming video I'm going to show you right now, uh, I was telling her my vision about this, uh, how to mount and balance our telescope. I wanted her, I mean, I wanted us to do like one, two, you know, step one, step two on the camera, on the, on the ground. And she was like, why, why, why? So we argued. But in the end, we were like laughing enough. So you will see right now. Stop! Hey, go! Like a plan. Wait, well, no, no, I'm getting pissed. Oh my in the back. god! I'm pissed in the background. Oh my god. Stop it. Go. You're, you're go. dumb. You're dumb. Go. You're dumb. We're gonna make you laugh. Someone's laughing. <laughs> Step one We begin by putting the tripod out first. This will be the base of our entire mounting process. On top, there is a ray. We have one last question from Kieran Cat. What are our favorite moments stargazing? We honestly have so many. It's hard to choose because they're just... They're all special in their own right. Some sweet. Like in the beginning when we took our first Milky Way shot together. Some fearful, like fending off coyotes in a ghost town for incredible night shots or experiencing a surprise missile launch in the middle of the desert. Happy moments, like light painting with loved ones. 
perilous ones, like when we got this sweet shot next to a busy highway for one of our all-time favorite images. Moments like setting up our mount together like pros and making sure that we didn't forget anything. We even treasure the scary encounters with wild insects. <laughs> and also the not so scary moments we had with wild animals. Memories, like being humbled by our first magazine feature. Carrying the fruit of our labor everywhere we go. Sharing tender moments alone together. And inspiring the next generation with astronomy. Being able to attend CES thanks to this hobby. Getting our first glimpse at the sun together and learning that our nearest star is the most underappreciated. At least until a solar eclipse occurs. And even on a cloudy day, we made it work. Making the best out of the most boring moments. All the time we enjoyed being unplugged. The times that we got silly in some of our episodes. Or when we opened up a very old and smelly book with astronomy entries. But the supreme one was probably the moment that we trusted each other enough to work together. In short, we get to spend time together, out in the wild, and away from our regular life. We get to experience all the failures and successes along the way and discover the infinite beauty of space together. And that's the ultimate and best part about doing this hobby as a couple.